All right, uh, welcome to my stream. Maybe someday I'll be able to get the order of operations correctly and I can get audio working immediately. Um, but that's uh, not happening since I'm still new to this. But it's fun. This time now I don't have the echo of my own voice in my ears slightly delayed, which was super distracting before. Um, and I can actually do some fun things. Um, Uh, ask questions in the chat if you have any. Um, I, I'm thinking about ways to uh, show off the tools that I end up using. Um, I've sort of had them as asides, but people have asked in chat um, while I was while I was working on them. Uh, but um, I thought maybe I'd make a GitHub repository or something for some some pieces of it. Um, if anyone ends up having questions about the tools, most of them are stupid aliases. Like, uh, like D is an alias for git diff. Git show. And git log one line. And then I, I was so used to typing um, uh, this is close. <laughs> Uh, I was so used to typing ls, like, you know, ls-latr to get things, give me the full details on my directory listing in reverse chronological order that I found myself doing weird things like asking, like trying to say uh, git minus latr to see my, all my branches, which uh, does not work. So I just ended up making an alias for latr, uh, which actually is just a thing to remove the pager, and I made git latr was, I wanted to see a branch, a list of the branches sorted by committer date um, so that I could see stuff like all the things I am working on and what's most recent. Um, so this view of, of uh, git branch, the star is what, what's in your current directory and the pluses are work trees you have. So this is sort of the beginning of that piece. Um, so sysclose is your favorite. Why is sysclose your favorite? I was trying to think of weird things, and I think um, uh, I think there's the process or VM read process. I can't remember what it is. Or basically reading remote process memory is just terrifying. I mean, I suppose I should say seccomp is my favorite syscall, but. I don't know. I get to I get to see it often enough that. Anyway, um, what I wanted to do today. Uh, so last time I went sort of like did a you know walk through reviewing patches sort of maintainership workflows that I use. Um, this one is going to be more about um, looking at uh, the another feature branch um, that I been working on that I'd sent out a couple times. This was for uh, randomizing the stack offset the kernel uses on the syscall entry. The idea being that a lot of exploits have depended on knowing at least the relative layout of stacks. Uh, you know, you could put something in the stack with one syscall uh, that you know is going to be leaked or get used in due to uninitialized, whatever. Um, that's sort of the classic approach. And um, and then make another syscall, and you know right where it is, because you figured out other things. But if it moves on you every time, uh, it makes things much, much less robust. Um, it makes attacks unstable. Um, I don't know what language that is. Anyway. Um, so uh, this is, let me get the URL if people are interested in looking at it. This is kernel stack base offset randomization. Yes, yeah, chroot and unshare. <laughs> That's good. Um, so this is what I'm looking at right now, the kernel stack base offset here. I'll put it in 
also in the stream, as well as the chat, just in case those things are separated. Um, so uh, there's a long history on this feature, but mainly it's not upstream, and I wanted to get it upstream. Um, the first time I was ever aware of this defense was uh, as part of PAX's uh, Confix PAX RAN case stack. Um, uh, Elena Rashitova worked on uh, getting it into upstream, um, which uh, x86 maintainers had a lot of uh, points about things that needed to change for making it maintainable and, and whatever else. And there was a lot of bike shedding around which random numbers should be used to, to make make this reliable or whatever. Um, back then, it sort of got, uh, in a while back, it sort of got walked away from because it was hard to justify its change without saying specifically, what is this going to fix going forward? Um, it is notoriously difficult to get security defenses into the upstream Linux kernel if you can only say, here are the things in the past uh, that it defended against, and yes, there are other things that defend against those things also, but we see this as defense in depth, um, etc. Uh, which, you know, makes sense. If you can't argue the position, it's, it's difficult to do. But um, since Elena's last patch on that, um, at least two other attacks have leveraged being able to have a predictable stack layout uh, to some degree. Uh, so I think that's a reasonable justification um, for getting it. Um, anyway, the bug report talks about the specific requirements for this, and I, I picked it up somewhat recently uh, to, um, to get it, to send it out again. And just as I was getting ready, um, <laughs> the kernel rewrote all of the syscall entry code, uh, which is, is frustrating in that I have to refactor things, but it's actually really nice because most of the syscall entry code is architecture agnostic. Um, so, and much of this defense is actually architecture agnostic the way it is currently designed. Uh, so being able to bolt that onto the new entry code uh, is nice because as soon as an architecture uh, switches to using the new entry code, the, the generic entry code, it will suddenly gain this defense, uh, more or less. At least that's a theory. So uh, I wanted to walk through rebasing and reworking this to figure out where things were. So that gets me to git latr, which tells me, you know, where are we? Um, or just latr. And I want to look for um, what I call it last stack. How about? So I had been working on a v5 that was not sent out, so let's start there. Um, I'm gonna add a work tree for it. Let's call it stack offset. Yet another place to go. I'm gonna try to keep the chat window visible somewhere. leave my face in the chat window covered because the transmission delay is super distracting. Okay. Uh, so here we are. So L is just giving me a short log. Um, I can describe what this, what's happening here. So this last was, I had rebased it to 5.8 RC2. Um, so the last release. And um, I figure uh, moving that forward will be interesting, but I'll go through what the pieces are just so it's a little bit uh, more clear um, what's happening as I continue to move everything around in my screen. Okay. So looking at this in reverse. Um, do, 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 do. So there's some sort of additional bits um, that I did as um, supporting infrastructure for this. Um, and one of them, I think this 
actually disable the stack protector was taken upstream. Uh, this was, how do I get into this? Uh, so the entry code at some point was rewritten and I uh, discovered that on adding this, um, adding this feature effectively adds a, an unused array on the stack as a way to push the stack out um, so that it still works with the stack unwinder. Uh, but because the compiler sees it as an array, it says, oh, we need to turn on the stack protector for this array, ha ha, uh, which of course completely bloats that part of the, the entry code and makes things noticeably slower. Um, and so uh, we basically need to turn it off for that, but we can't do it on a per function basis because the compilers don't, didn't have that support. Um, and as it happened, this was getting turned off anyway for the entire compilation unit. Uh, but it was done not quite right because uh, some compilers turn on stack protector by default. So you can't just remove turning on stack protector. Protector, you have to actually turn off stack protector. Anyway, this particular feature I think is now an upstream. Um, let's see. Let me just quickly verify. And yes, so x86 fixes. Of course, I'm waiting for the pager. Let's do it differently. So actually disable stack protector, yes. Um, so here it is, because it, that moved around even. And another, uh, another fun one was uh, another yet another silly gitism that I wrote for myself was called contains because frequently I see a commit and I say, well, what release the kernel uh, was that in? Um, hello on the chat. Uh, so I say git contains of this and it goes and says, oh, that was put into 5.8 RC6. Um, and that looks like, and again, all these scripts are mostly just horrible hacks that worked and I worked on it until it worked uh, and then I was done. So you can ignore most of that because that was an old way I found to do it. Um, so effectively, none of this do we care about. Um, so the uh, this uses the the sort of the way the Linux kernel project tags its versions. Uh, when Linus tags stuff, he says v, and then what version number it is. Uh, so by default, this this little script will attempt to match tags that start with v. Uh, now, if you if I were to just run um, this describe, because the describe is trying to match a specific thing, if we just did this, we would see all kinds of weird stuff about specifically when that tag got merged into the overall branch. Um, actually, do I need to say, I might need to say master here, but anyway. Um, and that's usually not useful for day-to-day -day stuff. So I just added a set to just drop everything after the tilde uh, because it just makes, makes my life easier. Uh, this may or may not work for other repos. I think this works successfully for looking at the LLVM repo, but I think the match is slightly different. I don't quite remember. Let me, let me go look real quick. Uh, let's pick a random one. I don't know if this will work. Yeah, I cannot describe. Um, whoops. Wanted. Uh, it contains. I'll make my match be anything. Ah, uh, it's not working. Okay, forget it, but another day. Uh, there's some docs on the LVM, uh, the Clang Built Linux wiki that uh, talk about this. 
Anyway, so git contain. So I know that that did get pulled in, which is all I wanted to know. Um, it is in 5.8 RC6. So in looking at what I have to rebase, I can sort of remember uh, that this one I don't have to worry about anymore. So that'll go away. Um, and then I wanted to construct some infrastructure for jump labels. Um, I don't think this went in uh, because there wasn't a user of it yet, but this was the first user of it. Um, so jump labels are a way for the code, the kernel to effectively be self-modifying um, in a way that makes it, uh, makes it an efficient an efficient Boolean test. So instead of at some place always saying, um, you know, I'm about to enter a syscall, has randomization been enabled? Then do it. Um, uh, that 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 test, that actual test loop, um, that branch can be removed. It'll actually be replaced with NOP instructions, uh, which makes the whole thing much much faster. Because you can, it's not like that's changing on and off frequently change it at boot and effectively never again um, so you can have the kernel rewrite itself to only ever test that once and I'll just rewrite the code so the idea was to provide a way for those jump labels uh, to be um, to work and they have different states like they can default on looks different from default off um, and as a result, this sort of gets into how you define these. You would normally say, I want to define a static key as true, or I want to define a static key as false, uh, and that'll change what the assembly layout looks like. Otherwise, it'll by default take the jump, or you know, what's which is the default code? Is the default code going to be inline, or is it going to be jumped to and returned from? Um, so the idea is to, to do that. But frequently, this means that, uh, well, here, I can continue that example, where you get these cases where you, know, you have some boot feature, like in this one, init on alloc or init on free, uh, where you say, okay, I, I'm building the compiler, or I'm sorry, I'm building the kernel so that it is default on or default off, but at boot time I can switch it. Um, so it's still fast, but you want to unpessimize whatever your build configuration is. <clears throat> this, for example, is nice for letting distros enable a feature that they can have off by default, but the people who want it can turn it back on and nobody really pays much penalty for, for that. Or rather, the default doesn't pay a penalty and the people who want the feature, it costs only a tiny bit uh, different than if they built their own co uh, compiler. But anyway, this, this pattern where you say, here's one config, <clears throat> static key true. Otherwise, static key false. Like that's that's silly. We ought to have a general way to just say, well, we don't know. The static key depends on some config, and it's going to be called this. So uh, that's that's what that's what that is, and that's what got built there. Um, because I'm going to use that for the stack offset uh, randomization. Um, so as part of that, then we use an example of saying, here we are. We can now actually unpessimize a whole bunch of these other branches as well. Um, we can say, instead of explicitly saying it's unlikely, because we don't know that it's unlikely, it depends on our build style or our config choice, we can say static branch maybe, uh, which again will depend on uh, this new structure, which is to say, if some config is enabled, pick likely, otherwise pick unlikely. And that'll get, uh, the compiler will optimize all that away to just either the static branch likely or unlikely at build time. Anyway, all that is just infrastructure for, for doing the rest of this. Um, the actual code for doing this mostly is uh, I'm repeating a lot of uh, what Elena had put in her series uh, and trying to update it with some of the new attacks. Uh, that came out since her series, um, and then a description of how it's designed. Um, and again, mostly it's about inserting uh, a, oddly, inserting a variable length array, the thing that uh, we just spent the whole bunch of time removing from the kernel, but this will be the one place where we can actually use it um, and, and prove that it is safe to use because the offset is uh, stored in a, a small sized variable. Anyway, so 
right, so the summary of the assembly out on this says uh, what this looks like now. All right, so we get the stack offset um, and we mask it so it's not very big and then subtract that from the stack pointer and off we go um, and then clear the result. Um, so that's five bits of randomness. It takes very little uh, overhead to do this. Um, some tests that I did and repeating some of the stuff that Elena did are, uh, you can see the, you know, the difference is one one th or seven one thousandths of a microsecond difference. Uh, so that's for a no opsys call. And most of the time you're not doing no opsys calls. Um, I described some of the problems, um, which was with stack clash protection. Stack clash protection attempts to probe um, any stack use, uh, and it attempts to probe any stack use even, no, no, sorry, the, the code, at least in GCC, would insert stack probing, um, let me back up again. For stack clash protection, to do a stack probe, you want to do every page of stack that is being allocated, you want to go read it uh, to make sure that it's actually valid and, and present. Um, so the stack probing basically looks at how far the stack grew, and then for every 4K or whatever your page size is, it'll do a read. Um, so this code, since it's a static small amount that's less than a page, uh, actually never gets called, but all the assembly for it is still there, so it just jumps past it. But anyway, doing a before and after of the assembly was, just, was very surprising. Like, what is all this? It's actually unreachable. Oh, this is a stack clash protection, right? Okay, so that gets disabled as well here, because again, we're not actually, it's not a VLA in the traditional sense, so we don't need stack clash protection. Um, and then the other one I talked about already was stack protector. Um, And enter a new line and put. Oh yes, sorry, I'm really delayed on on reading my chat. Yeah, so if I've, I don't know. Uh, the question in the chat was, wait a second, you can new line? Yeah, so if you do a um, whatever, and I'm like, oh man, I need that, I need that thing from several several lines ago. You just do a line continuation. Like a backslash at the end of your line, hit enter, and suddenly your your scroll, your history is available again. You can go through, and I'm like, ah, oh, that's the one I wanted, and I'll hop back and and use that argument. I suspect there's probably better ways to do that, but yeah, um, I uh, I use that a lot because I'm usually looking at like two or three different shahs in my history, and I I don't know, I should probably have a selectable paste buffer, but this appears to be what I've learned to do. Um, okay, getting back to this. Anyway, those are the two gotchas. It's more comparison, lots of stuff here. Um, and then I made a bunch of changes since before. Uh, I think it was mostly documentation and some other bits, but I'll have to do a diff for my, uh, for my post. But anyway, so let's just crash into this and see what happens. Um, I'm actually going to... I'm actually going to rev this tree because it's going to be easier for me to compare v4 to v5 to figure out what I changed. Um, let's see, is that SSH machine which you are working with? What do you mean? Um, have I SSH to this machine I'm working on? Yeah. Hopefully that's what you mean. Um, anyway, so I'm just going to make a v6 of this because it'll be easier for me to go back and look at well, the difference between v4 and v5 and then I can look at uh, or actually it's not really a v6 because I never sent v5 so I'll call it a v5.1 um, just to name it this uh, and then it'll be easier for me to compare what changes I made when doing the rebase um, so where are we in this so the last base was on 5.8 RC2. RC2 tends to be a pretty stable base for things as far as uh, merging stuff and I don't I don't think there's much in uh, in Linux Next that is affecting this but we can look at that later. Um, so this is pretty straightforward. V8 4.9 RC2. I don't remember what caret 
Brace Brace does. I think uh, I learned that from Stephen Rothwell, who's the maintainer of Linux Next. I think that says uh, go to the commit the tag refers to, not the tag itself, or something like that. I Again, it hasn't broken me yet, so I just keep doing it. Um, so this should yell about a couple things and probably be annoyed at at least the first couple of things. So where are we? We are on provide a way to actually disable stack protector, which we know has already uh, been added and obviously completely broke uh, because that code already exists. So on this rebase, I can actually skip this patch because I know it's been put in. So off it goes and happy with jump label, happy with init on alloc. Uh, obviously not going to be happy with actually attaching this stuff. So conflict in the make file. Let's see what the conflict looks like because it auto merged the rest of it. Uh, let's see. Oh, what is that? Well, yeah, I mean, it's a, uh, sorry, the, the question is, what in the world is that machine? Yeah, that's 72 cores. That's, that is sort of a desktop workstation thingy. Um, it is a, one of these, Xeon, what's it thing? So that's, uh, Two threads per core, 18 cores per socket, two sockets. Um, it's a pretty beefy machine, um, but don't include the tag. Okay, yeah, Gustavo is agreeing with me on that. Um, and Gustavo's here to uh, also tell us about his way bigger machine. <laughs> this so has 72 CPUs. Uh, it's it's a good build machine, but this poor this poor thing gets abused. Um, Anyway, uh, so, okay, here where we are uh, on looking at deconflicting the make file. Let's see where we are. So I just look for the diff separator um, when I'm trying to find where things broke. And there's only one. I've searched for another. Uh, so this is related to initialization. So in here, I am turning off. So this was adding the no stack clash protection. Uh, all I'm doing is adding another k -build C flag. So um, I am perfectly fine with what exists uh, in the above section. I just need to add more. Um, so the only thing I look at is, is this the right place for it to live? Should it go in other places separate from? And I think I'm just gonna leave it right where it is. Um, I'll leave what's happening there. tracking, just looking to see if there are other things. Basically, I'm in the area of the make file where kbuildc flag gets stuff, gets stuff added to it. And I think I'm pretty happy with this. And then another thing is I try to look at the patterns that people use for adding stuff. Um, you'll see here, so in, in this case, it doesn't really matter syn like syn effectively, syntactically, whether there's a space or not after the comma. And the call CC option is an if else. So it'll add this if that call, if this CC option is successful, it'll add this, it'll result in that string. And if not, it'll have another string. So some people like putting an explicit comma here for an empty else statement, but it is also completely valid to just leave it off. Um, and you'll see that there is a mix of coding styles even right here locally. But I try to match those subtleties as I'm adding stuff. And once again, the, some of them have space, some of them don't. It's pretty inconsistent. But looking at that kind of context is something I learned while doing like security patch work uh, at Ubuntu because uh, I had to teach my I had to teach my vimrc to do figure out what tab style a given piece of software is using because you'd be, you know, fixing all kinds of random packages. Let's see. Um, I'm going to catch up real quick. Do you reference the tag, not the first tag, first non tag object, right? Gotcha. D reference. Um, my, yeah, my 
build machine is Intel. If you saw the LS CPU, um, Gustavo's is AMD. Um, anyway, so uh, I don't know where it was. Where was I? I was here. Okay. So in this case, I kind of like the style of having spaces around stuff, and I don't like the empty else. Uh, so since it's somewhat erratic, but there's other things nearby, I'm just gonna do it this way here. Um, disable it for all compilers. Anyway, so if that exists, turn it off. I uh, will say yes, we've deconflicted that, so git rebase continue. At which point it'll completely go off the rails because <laughs> The entire x86 entry code has been removed because uh, it's mostly in common now. So, where are we? So, enable the current one. Yeah, fail, fail, fail. Okay, so the main one. So, in here, our kconfig still exists. Um, and looking at that, it's mostly the like turning on. Actually, can I say one file now? There's a way to see staged diff changes. I'm not remembering what it is right now. I'm gonna look. Diff is called staged. Dash, no index. Um, dash dash staged is an acronym or a synonym for dash dash cached. Okay, so it is staged. Hey, I remembered. All right, so diff dash dash staged. Okay, so here's the kconfig difference. <laughs> it's, it's just, yes, it is cached, thank you. Um, you, can see the, you can see the delay I have between me actually talking and when the chat comes in. Um, so the kconfig change is pretty straightforward. It just says, hey, this architecture has this feature at all. Um, by adding this to the generic the new generic entry code, though, I probably can remove that entirely because you just get it for free uh, if you're using the entry code, the generic entry code, and that'll have its own kconfig to select it. Uh, so we'll come back to this, but let's look at um, let's look at what else. Our main conflict was in common. All right. So again, looking for the diff separator. Okay, so it says, well, head is empty, and your version has all this code that got torn out. Like, yes, I'm aware. Okay, so we're going to go find the end of it. All right, so this is the first one, which says, what is what is all this junk? And is there anything with k-stack? Stack. All the case stack is in the do syscall entries. Um, so this is relatively nasty, and what I'm going to do is actually uh, skip these and come back and do that manually. So uh, ARM64 has not switched to the common entry code yet, uh, so I can still keep those patches. So I have skipped the x86 for the moment, but if I go look at my my v5 to see the specific patch I want. You can see the relatively small amount of changes. There's descriptions about it, but there's a kconfig, there's adding the stack, and then there's uh, choosing the next uh, stack offset and adding the stack offsets. It's a pretty small patch. Uh, so instead, we'll go look at the entry code to see where we need to do this. So we need a prepare exit to user mode. Let's see if any of the names stayed stayed the same, and they did not. I know that we have a prepare still. Oops. Man, let's find out what it is. So I think it's in entry. No, kernel entry. Kernel entry. Prepare and exit and user. How about that? Did I find it yet? Okay, so it is now called. <laughs> Names have been rearranged to exit to user mode prepare. Cool. 
first of all, let's remind ourselves what we want to do. So this is, we've got our cues disabled. Let's just snag this real quick and go look at that. Exit to user mode, exit to user mode loop, exit to user mode, prepare. Okay, so the architecture specific bits are there. And then we do a bunch of other checking. So I think we've got the air cues asserting that things are disabled there. Actually, are we doing that twice? Huh, okay. So I think I think we only want to do this once. So we don't want to be in the exit user mode loop. And I think we don't want to be in the architecture specific stuff. So I am going to put it here for the moment. And we can take a closer look once I've got this stabilized. Do, do, do. Now, the only thing that I'm a little concerned about is the fact that um, this is clearly not architecture agnostic. Uh, this is read TSC, which is going to be x86 specific, and even the mask on that is uh, not architecture specific. So not super, super excited about that, but my thinking is we can add another handler to sort of uh, deal with that. But that still means that we might have architecture specific bits uh, in here. Um, so, I think for right now, I'm going to just pretend that we can't make this agnostic for now and see what it looks like. And if there's a clean way to make it agnostic, we can do that then. So let's remove this again and go to... Um, This called was so in Arch x86 we ought to be able to find Arch exit to user mode prepare as an entry common. certain this is the right place, but it's not completely unreasonable. So I'm trying to look at what this used to look like. So yeah, it's it's again locked up sys exit. Yeah, because the loop got rearranged. Anyway, I think it should go there-ish. We'll see what goes horribly wrong. Yeah. All right, let's stick it there. We'll leave the kconfig uh, that we needed from this. So uh, I just want to say six kconfig. Sorry, wrong directory. Okay, so that's the diff and I'll just Flat that in there. Um, so now our diff looks like we've got the kconfig, we've got the random ksec offset. Whoops, wrong s. Now we need, that's picking it and this is applying it, which is effectively in the do syscalls, the three entry paths on x86. Um, tag files for navigation. No, I haven't. I haven't done the tag files yet. Um, I. It is not something I have spent enough time looking at. Um, my understanding is that I need to do some kind of C scope madness. Um, 
on every tree I'm working on, uh, which is awkward. Uh, also, hello. Saw your hi. Get grab dash W. Dumping a name function to console. Yes, please. This is another reason I love doing this. All right, uh, man, get grab. What is dash W? Function context. Ooh. The whole function, oh yes. <laughs> I love this, let's see, what did I just grip for last? Oh, I love it. Well, that's handy, yes. Oh yes, vgrep. I know it's so fun. I saw, uh, so I saw, I saw Greg's post on vgrep, and I laughed and laughed because I, I needed similar functionality. I think vgrep does a little bit more in a slightly different way. I haven't converted to that vgrep because I think it's better, uh, but I already had one also named vgrep, which I thought was truly hilarious. So there's the horrible, horrible hack, uh, which is. I want to find the definition of some function, or some struct usually, uh, and then go to it. And it's, it's madness. Uh, so this tries to find it, and if there's only one match, it'll go, it'll launch the editor directly at it. So like, uh, like if I did a git grep struct seccomp data, right? That, may have only one match, but of course there's one in tools testing or include, but I, um, let's see if I can think of another one. Uh, uh, seccomp, I think it's just called user notif, right? User notif? No, seccomp user notif. I don't even know my own code. Hold on, let's cheat. Seccomp k notif, okay. So if I wanted to find like, where is this thing? Oh, it's in one place. And then I'd go, all right, what line is it on? And I'd do VI and all this other stuff. So I'm like, no, no, there's one output. So I'll just say vgrep and it goes na 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 poof and sticks me there. So much nicer. Um, and vgrep I think does a similar thing, but it's a little bit better because right now if I, like if I did vgrep on my, my vgrep on the set comp, you see that this has two matches. My vgrep just gives up. It's like, meh, there's just two, I can't pick one. Um, whereas I think the vgrep you've linked to will actually like prompt you for it or something. Anyway, it's, it is super handy. I love being able to do that because frequently when I'm trying to find some structure, it jumps right in there. Um, yeah, but git grep dash w, man, I'm gonna definitely add that one, thank you. Uh, okay, uh, let's see, where the heck was I? All right, we're done part of this, or attempted part of it, and I'm still looking for the other halves, or the other pieces where we actually add the random stack. So let's look at kernel entry, and try to figure out what, um, all these effectively start with enter from user mode. Get crash W, ha <laughs> ha. Enter from user mode. And where does it mark? Ah, colon, colon marks the match, because it's not colorized. A colon marks, marks the match. Um, so that's, that's the actual, so there is still a function called uh, enter from user mode, which is what we're gonna look for. So there's IRQ entry from user mode. Mm. Where's my deuces go? Syscall enter from user mode. Let's see. Is that misnamed? Oh, lovely. 
some more bits here. Single step. There is. <laughs> there is no syscall enter from user mode. trace hook says call enter from use ah it's, it's not called user mode it's called user underscore mode so let's see quick aside uh, we're gonna do we're gonna call it entry and we're gonna call it uh, fixes entry Docs, how about? All right, so this is dash, man. Uh, master and dash B, but I think I have to do bash dash B back here. Oh no, it worked. Never mind. Okay, so I'm making a quick branch here because if I trip over things, I'm probably not the only one. So let's quickly go to entry. Do that grep, and let's do both. Entry common dash h, uh, enter from user underscore mode. And now I can use my vgrep, because there's only one left. Ha ha ha. User underscore mode, just quick doc. Doc check. Oh, this is gonna be long. Sorry, my git commit hook goes and tries to see who has done the stuff. Um, okay, so I'm gonna say uh, fix typo in comments for syscall enter from user mode. Just to help myself and others with finding the correct function names. A typo for user mode versus user mode. And I'll send that later on. Okay. Back to this. So it is in common.c. Of course, I'm in the base directory still. So we want this, but not really. There we go. We have found enter from user mode. So we enter, and so which begins, get our flags, look for trace stuff. And this is the point. Like I know where syscall trace enter is because I've been mucking about it with, with syscall, but I guess I haven't seen this piece. Um, syscall enter from user mode. But this just tells me what the syscall is. Where are we actually using that? So I see it in. Oh, in the arch specific stuff. They're still named the same. Oh right, of course. So, so the entry hooks are obviously still going to be the same because those entry hooks are architecture specific. So the callbacks that you set <clears throat> in the in the in the chipset or whatever are going to have the same entry points. And then there's generic stuff that happens. So um, this is actually not so bad. Uh, instrumentation begin. We look it up. Um, Sorry, where's the actual call? There it is. Here's the actual call. Here's the actual call. So really, I think uh, we just stick it back in here. I 
like the function names will actually be the same. Except we do it before enter from user mode in each of these cases. So this should be pretty straightforward. We just want to look for each of those instances. to enter. Thrag, make sure we've set compat. Okay. Matches the old as an okay, so I think we want this here. Uh, because again it's before the enter the user mode. Yep, that's the first thing, although the old one. All right, and what's next? Those are really the only two places now. Do syscall 64 and syscall 32 enter? Why did I have a third fast syscall 32? <laughs> well, we'll come back to it as check third syscall entry point. What else do I need to do? Oh, uh, send. Send comment fix. All right, so in the meantime, here we are. It seems mostly correct. I feel like we're going to be missing an include file. But did we need that? Yes. So we're going to need to do our also include file in the, in the entry code. And let's keep this randomized. Or not randomized, uh, opposite of randomized. Let's keep this um, alphabetical. Let's see, your git commit looks for the subject prefix of the past three commits. Um, uh, it's actually five, but since it's such new code, there were only three. But yeah, uh, I talked about that a little bit last time. I have a really nasty git hook. Uh, where am I? Get. I don't know. What's telling me. Um, oh, right, because I'm in a checkout. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm a working tree. I think it is commit prepare prepare commit message. So the horrible thing that I do. Let's see. Let's go look at this real quick. So first, uh, as I'm starting, I'm starting the commit. So this is commit prepare, and this is where I learned dash dash cached um, from earlier. How I knew it was there somewhere. Uh, this diff gets me all the changes that are about to be committed um, in name only. So I just get the files. Uh, and then I look at how many files am I touching in this commit. And I arbitrarily pick 16 as the limit. Like, don't do this if I'm changing more than 16 files in one commit, because that usually means I'm doing some sort of crazy, you know, tree-wide change, and it's just not worth my time. Um, so I make a couple temp files for doing things, um, and then I get the, the diff of what I've changed for that... Um, Sorry for all of that. And then with that diff, I'll use a sort of variation on get maintainers to figure out who has touched those. Um, and then jam that CC list into the commit message immediately before my signed off by line, as I'm reading through this. Um, and then guess a prefix uh, based on the files. And then effectively put that in the prefix and um, and toss that into the top of that the top of that file, and then clean it up after myself. Um, so looking at that is get prefix is called get. This basically walks the entire git log for those things, 
strips off old patches, uh, like the old style, uh, some very old commits will still have patch in its name. Um, sort that, figure out how many there are, sort them by likelihood, and spit it out. Um, I think this is in my crazy tool tree. Yes, so let's see. This I actually have a link for. Let me get it. One second. Um, I haven't put everything here because not everything is entirely usable. Anyway, link for the stream is kernel tools and a link for the chat. Um, so it doesn't include the hooks which I should include, um, but it's got get prefix. Uh, split on maintainer is fun, although as Gustavo will, like, Gustavo will likely tell you, it needs some work, um, as in some covert builders. Uh, let's see, what else do I have? Is CC, no, what was it in the um, uh, get CC. What does this look like? Yeah, so this is effectively collecting the, a file, a, pa a diff, right, whatever, um, so that I can pipe into it, uh, and then run get maintainer on it, set the, uh, the percentage, because people will do drive-by fixes or little things, like I don't, I don't need to be um, harassing various people with stuff. Um, and then I remove myself, and then I think uh, at some point uh, David Windsor asked not to be included in those in any of those CCs, so I just hard coded that. Um, anyway, I'll I can toss that in there. Obviously, this one needs generalization because I've got customizations specific to me here. Um, and then what was the other one? Merge before so that's another horrible. All these horrible scripts. There's another one. So I would figure out what line was my signed off by. Split the file into before and after, jam a line in there, and recombine it. Uh, I feel like there's got to be some kind of magic to do this cleaner than the insanity I have here, but it works, and I don't do it all that often because it's just a commit time. Uh, so it's not like a super fast workflow. Um, anyway, let's see, where were we? We're looking at this. Oh no, not looking at that. I was looking at uh, 5.1, where am I? I'm looking at my diff. Did I not commit this? Or am I in another window? Hmm. I really thought I had committed this. Uh, what ministry do I have to say? Where was I? Anyway, I don't remember, so let's move on. Yes, horrible scripts are the best. <laughs> right up until they break and you go, oh my god, who wrote this? Uh, okay. Was I not? Oh, right. Actually, I don't even need to do this. Uh, that was always for the entry, fixes entry docs. That's how we got to it. Um, okay. So I think I'm done enough for this right now, at least the first pass at getting this built again and tested. So uh, the old... See, what was the old one? Enable random. So that's the old commit from my 5.0. So I'll say git commit uh, AEC. I want to just copy this text from that commit. And this is, I'll need re-verification, but, and this will probably be, it'll look a little bit different, but fundamentally it'll be about the same. But here, let's add another to-do. Read diff against new entry code. But again, I'm just trying to get this built and running first, and I can clean up the other bits. Uh, let's see, commits for more to do. Okay, so now what does this tree look like? ARM64 entry, x86 entry, uh, let's, I'm going to reorganize that just to have it match the old tree where I did 
x86 first and arm after. But while we're here, let's look at the arm one, which is very similar. We have the select, we've had it, gets it where it's added, and where we choose the k stack offset. Um, and you can see we've got a different random number choosing mechanism here. This one's a little bit more, it's a little bit more heavyweight. Um, ARM64 doesn't have a particularly, uh, I don't know, a particularly great way to get like a timestamp counter in the same fashion. Um, so I just use get random int because again, most of the people who want this feature are really not too concerned about a couple, you know, microseconds here and there. So the first thing is to get this landed and, and sorted, and then as we move forward, make it performant. Uh, my latest favorite comment from Jan Horn is his sort of uh, analysis that if you can convert security problems into performance problems, that's a good first step. Uh, so it stops being a security issue and just becomes a matter of making it run fast. That's usually much easier to um, both analyze and solve and just general security problems. Okay. Um, uh, I think that's done. Let's just build it and see what breaks. <laughs> Wait, I know it's going to break first of all. No, it's going to be fine. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Is that anything I'm committed? No. All right, off we go. Oh, I don't have an actual config in here. Hold on. Uh, let's look for... Do we have anything for stack? No. Six, six. Let's see. Let's do... Let's take this one. And see what we get. Lots of stack stuff. Have arch randomized case stack offset. So let's set the default to, yes. And go. Now we can actually see the CPUs. Wee. Ooh, warnings. I'm just gonna stop here. Please stop. Please stop. <laughs> we, okay, hold up. What don't we like? Oh, right, I forgot the include on um, in the comp. Wait, entry common. What about the other one? Hold on a second. this and better. Uh, what is it called? I'll include as an entry common of H. Needs to be there. Oh, alphabetized. And then for people who didn't see it last time, you get to see my other horrific hack. So I have this diff that came from that commit, the x86 commit, this commit. I would like this diff to reflect that. So I just say git smash those changes into this one. And off it goes. Um, I 
again, I could do this with git commit dash dash fix up and some things on the rebase, but instead, when I wrote this horrible thing, it was just another horrific, horrific hack to find the SHA I was talking about and then rewrite the rebase interactive file with what I wanted to do, which was move a SHA down and do a fix up to it and then call git rebase with that editor of the script I had just written on the fly. It is terrible, um, but yay, git smash. <laughs> I need to put that somewhere or I don't know, write it in a way that is less embarrassing to publish, but anyway. Um, so we smash that now, hold on, let's try building again. Yeah, script within a script. As is, I think Merge signed off by is also another one of those. Go, go, gadget CPUs. Um, I'm running out of water. Um, so while this is building, I get to thinking about um, what I need to do to be testing this. And I think in the past I had added terrible things to the LKDTM module to basically just report what the what the what the offset, the stack offset was. So you could call it a bunch of times uh, and see it. Now the question is where uh, where I had those changes, where where I had stuffed that. Let me read. Hold on, here we go. Git rebase auto squash interactive after using git commit fix up. Ooh, yes. And the fix up specifies the actual shell I want to touch, right? Mm. Auto squash. Yeah, that's true. Right, auto squash will do that arrangement for you. Right, right, right. Ooh, that would be much, much cleaner. Or at least it'll be a shorter script. Um, I'm curious. Wait, I'm just going to make more changes. I want to try that because. Oh no, I have an extra space. Do, do, do. So old style, git smash. Do, do. Now let's get rid of that extra white space. Okay. Let's try. And do, 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 do. So right, so it should be Git commit dash a m. Uh, let's call it also fix up dash dash fix up for the uh, I need this part still into why am I smashing it and then Rebase auto squash. Dash I. That really should do it, right? I didn't move true to user. Oh, I did use it as user bin. Lovely. But certainly that still works. All my paths. Will editor be executed on path? Let's find out. Oh, that's right. Thank you for the reminder. I will not use dash M. Um, dash dash no edit. Really? On the git commit? Oh, I suppose if you have turned on. I don't even know about that one. I like it. 
All right, let's just make this uh, path-based. Okay, so here we are. I remove that line. I want to add it to x86 entry and get smash. Oh, get out of here? Really? Um, I thought either, I mean, I've been using editor forever. Um, smash, right? Yeah, I've used editor. Eh, either should work. Let's see what happens. Here we go. What is it not like? Okay. There's no tracking information in current branch. What did I do? Oh, right. I need a specific target after uh, my into. Yes. Um, so, let's see. Into parent. Right, because one is implicit if you don't include it, I think. But if my into is head, I feel like there's gonna something is gonna go wrong here. Get smash. No, I want to get smash into head when I do this. So my into is different. should see a fix up sitting there, right? And if I say get reset to here, then I'm back to being uncommitted. And I can say, so I can try my new improved, uh, sorry. Fancy. Nice. Well, that's much better. I like that. I could reverse parse. Man, I'm going to learn all the Git tricks. <laughs> oh no, I am fine with the nerd sniping. I, this is, like Part of this is other people can tell me, oh my goodness, what are you doing? It would be so much easier if you did whatever. Uh, okay, let's see. Get smash if I want. So if I get it into right, if to get it into a shot, but I think because this will still rebase. Oh no, because the head is there and I can't rebase on a nothing. So yeah, you're right. I need the into to be an actual. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, I could also. Can I leave it blank? No, nope, because I still need to know it. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'll copy and paste your wonderful stuff. Uh, into is get Well, I'll use that until I trip all over it somehow. Did I get the other one wrong too? Ha! I typed it both on the command line and in the script wrong. Ha ha, thank you. <laughs> See, this is what it is. This is forget pairs programming. <laughs> I got a whole mess of people staring at me. Uh, okay, uh, let's see again where we were. Oh yeah, we're supposed to be building. Oh, I already built. Uh, okay, let's see what we get out of. Where are we? 
there's the VM. There's our kernel that we just built. Let's see what horrific things go wrong. Let's see, shall we? Uh, stack offset as I cover my <laughs> cover my face. Hey, it started user space. <laughs> so that's nice. Okay. Uh, all right, now to figure out what terrible things. First of all, I think I've got OKDTM installed. Yeah, it should be in there. Misc so OKDTM. I had. Uh, no, no, uh, not Cisco stack. What stack things that I have? Stack leak. Did I do it in stack leak? There are some pretty straightforward manipulations there. User copy. Pill reprogramming. <laughs> Let's do. Uh, Let's look at bugs for the things where I do exhausting the stack. So, exhaust stack, corrupt stack, and let's just add one here. Report stack. I am some card of. Magic, magic, and you are here. I, uh, 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 yep, that should, I think, get me what I want. almost done. Give me that kernel. I switched to using the XZ compression on the kernel just because it seemed like a lot of other places had switched to that. Um, and I was encountering, uh, I was not exercising code paths uh, because there's a little bit more going on in the XZ path. So I've done that, but it's weird because for me, there's this delay right there for a second where it says decompressing, which for me is like an emotional trigger because usually right after decompressing is when all the setup for page tables and all this other really nitty gritty low level stuff happens. So if there's any stall there, to, to me it usually means something has gone very wrong and I'm gonna have a hard time debugging. Uh, but now it's just actually decompressing for a split second. All right, so in this kernel debug is provoke crash, which is what the LKDTM is. So there's all that junk. In theory, we should have a port stack. There it is, yes. Um, so I've gotten in the habit since there's things in, so if you look for uh, like, um, like exec, data, right? Trying to have the kernel execute data. Um, it will kill the thread that is running. Uh, and if I do stuff like echo exec 
data into this, um, it'll kill my shell. <laughs> because that echo actually isn't bin echo. Uh, that's, that's a built-in, so it'll kill my shell. So I do not want to do that. So what I've gotten to doing is saying, I will use cat and use a, sorry, a redirect of, of what I want to type so it can go kill cat instead, for example. So that's like the blah, looking at dmessage, we go, you know, holy cow, what did you just do? All right, so this is LKDTM, performing direct entry, okay execution of something we can execute, attempting bad execution, and pow, kernel tried to execute none non-executable page, ba -doom. Anyway, so it gets rid of my cat. Uh, so that's sort of the pattern I'm in for doing this. I just keep it in my, my shell history. I don't really need to do it here um, because nothing is gonna get killed. It just shows up in the message. You are here. So since I have this default on, in theory, this should change a little bit every time. And so far it is. So that's, that appears to be working, but I never trust anything. Um, let's go boot with it off. Uh, I have forgotten what it is called. It's been too long. Case stack randomize off. Let's go look. I've forgotten what I called it. Randomize k stack offset. I yes, no. I was close. So, no. I don't want to do it. User space has started again. Oh, right. Sorry, this isn't going to be useful because I'm in the same... Sorry, it's a different process each time. So this will actually be different uh, because <clears throat> I'm running a different process. The cat is a different process. Uh, what happens if I actually switch back around to using the shell for this? That's better. Okay, so my old way actually works against me here. Uh, but if I just use the shells built in to do this, I can see with it off, uh, I'm always in the same place uh, for this one. Oh yeah, echo foo into T is another good one. Um, for some reason, I'm, I, I'm really attached to the, the file descriptor uh, this is these file descriptor ones. Like, I don't know, I, I got a huge kick out of being able to do like diff of two, like two completely different things. <laughs> I don't know, anyway, yes, uh, that would work. So, okay, this, this is correct. I gotta retest again because I did it wrong. Turn back on. Let's try again. That's better. That's more in line with what I'd expect with five bits of entropy. It's very small in the middle. Or not in the middle, but like in the low like byte here, which is a little bit less random than I would have expected, but it is strictly speaking working. Now it's just a matter of me uh, spending some time poking at it to, uh, to verify it's actually behaving correctly. But fundamentally, this is mostly ported to the new entry code. Man, that is not a lot of entropy right now. Five bits, I'm basically seeing like two bits of entropy. That's a little bit better. 
I'm just unlucky. Let's do a thousand of these. So, that's sort of the uh, poor man's statistical analysis of the distribution of a thousand syscalls and the, the offsetting. Um, you can see some, it's a little unbalanced. Let's see. Let's see. Um, to answer in chat, um, I am working on, uh, I'm working on Linux kernel. I am, I was rebasing a security defense patch set um, that has sort of been coming along every couple of months. I was rebasing it into new entry code in the kernel. Um, and this is a, this tends to be a lot about uh, sort of developmental, like how, how development works, maintainership, how, uh, how the kernel's ecosystem works, but there's a lot of kernel specific C and a lot of Git shenanigans. Um, some folks here just helped me rewrite one of my one of my Git scripts, as a matter of fact, so it's much shorter now. <laughs> so there's a little bit of Git. Of course, I guess I don't see joins and joins and parts, so I don't know if you're <laughs> even still in the chat. But valid valid question. Um, so yeah, there's that's that distribution. Let's try it. Let's try it bigger for fun. Let's do ten thousand. Actually, let's do it in a different shell, shall we? Just for fun. Okay, my line wrapping is working. Not Visual Studio. <laughs> I would have no idea what I was doing at all if I was in Visual Studio. Yeah, you get to see like Vim and Git and a lot of command line, which might be painful for some folks. But um, let's do it. Okay, so 20,000 lines out of there. I only care about where I am. Print the last thing, sort of unique. And there we go, a little bit more. But what we see from that is we're getting about, it's, not super evenly distributed, but it's not bad. Like we don't see anything that's like ten. Um, the stuff at the low end, though, is uncommon. Vim is greater than Visual Studio. Well, I agree with that statement, but I know not everyone will. Um, so that's thirty-three positions, which is really more like thirty-two because the one that's relatively uncommon. Um, so that is what. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. So yeah, that's five bits. That's five bits of entropy. Um, uh, question is, why not use get random int for ARM and x86? Um, and hex by hand? I don't know. I'm slow on hex. It's stupid. I can't. I, for some reason, while I managed to memorize all kinds of multiplication tables, if I say if someone says thirty two, I do not have a mapping to fifth bit. <laughs> it's crazy. I don't know why. Um, so why not get random int for both ARM and x86? So a lot of the discussion that happened uh, with the earlier versions of this patch really really rat holed around um, the speed and like utility of the random number, like people are really, really getting off in the weeds about it has to be super strong and super fast random number. Uh, and at the end of the day, the larger constraint uh, for acceptance for this series really was performance. 
um, which is why I went off and made sure that I was using the jump labels uh, for, for getting static branches, um, stuff like that. Uh, and at, at the end of the day, it is a statistical defense. Um, as an attacker, if you have local access, you're going to have a lot of control over the system. Um, and this is certainly not going to strictly stop all attacks that need to depend on uh, stack offset, but it does complicate things. And there is an argument to be made that making attacks less robust, like making them unstable or and or extending development time on them, has real world benefits as far as uh, defensive posture. Lots of perfectly rational people will disagree with my perspective on that, um, but that is my opinion and I think it's borne out in the work that I did um, when I was at Ubuntu. Uh, you, you, see, you see the real world effects. You see people getting frustrated or you know, attackers will, would tell me, hey look, this made, this made my life more difficult. And I say, oh, sorry. <laughs> Have you considered writing defensive code? Um, but anyway, the point is that, um, as a result, I have no illusions about the entropy being the, the key piece here. Uh, so doing, like, read TSC, which is not a great entropy source, is sufficient for implementing this. Um, the problem is, I, I would like a read TSC on ARM64, but it doesn't exist. Uh, or not in a way that, uh, that is fast to get. Um, and again, as I said earlier, if we can make it a performance problem, then that's much easier to both measure and address. Um, did you run the x86 entry code self-tests on these patches? I have not. Let's see what happens. Good idea. Um, it's only fair. When the entry code was written, they didn't run it against the second tests. <laughs> Uh, let's see, this is RC2, so there have been a bunch of fixes that landed since RC2 on the entry code. Uh, so let me, let's take a step back. So first of all, this, this reconfirms the five bits of entropy. It shows that user space is actually up and operational. I need to double check that there aren't additional entry points uh, because there were three, so I need to go dig that out and understand the changes that were made to the entry code there, but that's another to-do, but in the meantime, sure, let's go see what breaks. <laughs> um, so this is the rebased one, and I'm going to make a branch, well, first of all, let's go master, make sure I have any weird changes on top of it on accident, no, let's pull Linus's to the tree, ooh, I do have something different, what happened? I don't like that at all. Oops. Nothing different. Mm -hmm. Let's try going to RC2 RPG. Sets. Uh, I think I was at RC4 or something. Uh, I'm just going to wipe out whatever I had there. Okay, much better. Actually, I'm master now. And let's switch back. We'll do the checkouts. Let's call this. Well, we're checking out master, but we're going to call it. Do, 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 uh, the tree, uh, yes, sure, let's do that. And, oh right, I had these things carried forward, uh, the LKDTM tests. Uh, let's, let's switch back for a second. Oh, I can do my own trick. <laughs> That's probably more typing, but I'll just do that again. Do 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 do. Uh, progress LKDTM. Hack to C stack 
address. Okay. Now I can go check out my thing. All right, so I'll look back here. I'll go merge it forward from here. And I don't need to. So I'll just pull the changes forward. And what do we get? Got a conflict, but it auto-merged it. So that's nice. Wait, automatic merge failed. No, it did not. Okay. Sorry, it's common. I was looking at the make file. Curious. Why did the syscall enter from user mode vanish from the syscall 32 enter? I will look into that. But for now, let's move on. Tracing, version of generic code. Let's just look at this commit real quick. This is the fast 32 bit that I'm interested in. Let's call 32. Enter. Do and do fast. Oh, there. That actually answers the to do I had. I can fix that up. Cool, cool. Hold on. So I'm gonna have to rebase on a later one. Actually, this gets me back to git contains, right? Win. Well, RC contains this RC4. So probably I should move my series up to RC4 into RC2 to make sure I'm on top of this change. In the meantime, let's do. Um, It's, uh, well, do fast. What am I looking for? It's this one I'm looking for. Yeah. There we go. Do fast is called 32. Where is. Call enter from user mode. So it's called enter from user mode prepare. <laughs> I think that, that is what I'm going to need to patch later on here. Oh, things get really weird. User mode and user mode prepare, so I've got different ones now. Let's see what I break. I'll look at this in a little bit. Oh, uh, not done. Submerge. I didn't want this merge, did I? I wanted to cherry pick this, actually. Hello on chat. I didn't want to merge because I really wanted to cherry pick this. Okay, so my diffs are... This diff is one diff. Uh, the other one was... 
merge look like? Uh, was that one where we removed stuff? All right, let's uh, reset. Let's try that again. So what I really wanted to do was say this way. If I want to cherry pick this, that I have stuff. Ah, sorry. So that there's, it's actually sitting on top. And now we can do the entry bits. So let's see, remind myself what it was. That doesn't exist anymore. So we got to remove it again. Subtlety here. Is there a subtlety there? One, two, three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to move forward and check it later. Later being now, I mean. Okay, add, add, add. And good. Okay, I think that looks correct. Unfortunately, we're probably going to have to retest all of this. <laughs> Alright, so now what we have is uh, we're on top of whatever is latest, um, where Linus has removed VGACon scrollback support. We've got this stacked on top of it. We've got the LK DTM test. Um, no differences outstanding. Uh, let's do a build. While I go look at um, tools, testing, self tests, x86 has a whole bunch of really awesome tests. Um, this is what we we're getting at. So, what I can do, I think, uh, hey, does anyone know about make help? It shows you all of the make targets in the kernel. Um, there's, whoops. And gray self test. So let's build an install, but I think there's actually a gen tar sub, uh, sub target in there. Tools, testing, self test, make file, gen tar. So give me a tarball. Does it pay attention to um, I'm trying to figure out if I can specify targets and it looks like I have targets here. Can I override targets? Mm, I don't remember. Okay, let's find out. Testing, self-tests. Uh, I want gen tar. I want targets equal to x86. Uh, yeah, it's doing headers first. One moment, please. Actually, how's our other build doing? Our other build is done. Actually, our other build is done. Let's, oh, we already shut down. Let's uh, start this off with randomization off. So it did. It looks like it made me a sub, only the self-tests 
I wanted. So let's get this copied up to the image. Self test tower. We there's just eighty six, eighty six, and there's this handy script that'll actually run all the tests. Very nice. Okay, so this is with the stack thingy off, so it's not really a, what did this look like under our latest. Um, yeah, the tarball thing. So um, kernelci.org is, I just spent some time like reading through their bugs and some other stuff, that, how they attempt to fetch the K self-test tarball. And it's, uh, it's rather involved. And it seems like this should be a top level thing in the makefile, as opposed to having to dig around in the, the makefile down below, especially if Kernel CI is consuming it. Like the Lenaro test systems and Kernel CI are now pulling this and trying to run it. Although <clears throat> detection of actual test runs was broken for a while. Uh, I sent some patches last night for that. Anyway, so that's why I've got this on my mind. Anyway, here's the tarball. Here it is. Let's see what happens. It's not going to be perfect. And apparently everything, I don't get a summary, do I? Let me see what this looks like if I do. Uh, don't show me the diagnostics. Everything was successful. Cool, cool. Uh, let's reboot for turning it on. So we know at least Linus's latest tree with this stuff disabled, that all passes. So that's nice. So let's see what happens now. Yay, testing. All right, so it's happy. We assume. Let's, uh, what is my sequence of 10,000? Yeah, let's, uh, Let's do this one again. And then the unique. Do, 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 do. So I can see one, one CPU pegged. <laughs> uh, unique. Yep, okay. Still, still effectively 32 outcomes. So it's working. Yay. Just for fun. I think I remember, if I turn this back off, um, I think I remember seeing slight variance even with it disabled, like two positions, which I really scratched my head about. Um, but here it is reporting, this should be stable, it should be one or two. Uh, the or two is the part I could not quite figure out. Um, I'm starting to get hungry, so I might... Yeah, okay, so good. That's what I prefer to see. <laughs> it's just the one, because I couldn't explain why there would be two. So that's stable. With it off, it's always the same address. Uh, with it on, you get some small variation in it. Five bits worth of variation. Um, so that should be good. I'm going to walk through the rest of my to-do list, I think, um, and see... See what I've got to do to write this up again and send it out again. Um, one of the things that I mentioned was needing to do a diff before between my v4 and v5 because I think I cleaned up some more documentation, I think, on this. Uh, also, in these, these early patches, this stuff, uh, the jump label bits that I talked about at the very, very beginning, I think this pattern has shown up in a couple other new places in the kernel, so I'd like to um, additionally uh, replace those to sort of show this is a nice thing to change. Um, let's see, git grep for start with hash 
contain def contain config, but I want one line following it that includes declare static key. So I've got the init on alloc is the shuffle and slab, I'm pretty sure. This one does not have page reporting, does it? Nope. So let's go look at page reporting to see if this pattern persists. And I want, oops, the clerk static static key. Turn something on. Otherwise, it doesn't exist at all. Okay, well, so maybe this one doesn't follow that pattern. Page reporting enabled. Doesn't use it at all anymore, I guess. Let's see what else we got. Page, oops, missed that one. Suck.h. Oops. This one does not use that pattern either. Maybe what I need to do is <laughs> do two lines, ask for a line after declare static key, and then grep for else. <laughs> just the one. All right, never mind. No additional uses of this. So I'll just keep that as a thing to add. Um, I really thought there was another use, but I guess I don't. Maybe it was just mine. Oh yes, the entry code fuzzer. That would be, yes, it's I have <laughs> on my phone, <laughs> so on my phone in Chrome, the, the little tab, like the, the tab switcher on Android for Chrome shows you a count of how many tabs you have. And you know, you have, you have 10 tabs and you press it and you can scroll through your tabs and pick the one you want. Um, if you get to, <laughs> It's two digits. So if you have more tabs than 99, it just shows a smiley face, <laughs> which I find is mockery. So yes, somewhere in tabs number smiley face on my phone is the is is wanting to go read through the rest of the entry code fuzzer because I would love, love to see uh, more about that. Um, yeah. Let's see. Ooh, thanks. I'm glad to, I'm glad anyone who wants to watch me code. Um, does it turn into a frowny face? <laughs> it hasn't happened yet. Let me look. <laughs> uh, oh, sorry. It's not a. It's a big smiley face. It's uh, it's capital D. So colon capital D, which I view as sort of semi mockery. But yeah, I would like. I would like. I feel like if I get over two hundred, it should go. It should become very unhappy. Um, <laughs> Anyway, um, so I, I think, um, yeah, this is, I think this is probably where I'm going to stop because I'm about to eat my arm. Uh, I need some lunch. And um, yeah, cool. Uh, I hope to get this posted. I, like I said, I wanted to get through the to-do list I made for myself here. This one being, what happened? Uh, and what was I looking at? Was it zero E? Was it this one? Nope. 76, zero E, 76, this one? Yes, that's the one I need to go take a much closer look at. So let me just keep a note so that I don't forget. Uh, I can send the comment fix right away, but I'm not going to waste people's time with that right now. And then I have the other to do from, I think it was the entry, right? Yeah, rediff asm. Which actually isn't that different. It's not actually the entry code that's in it much different. Um, I don't think there are others, but yeah. Um, 
Anyway, so the next step after this, um, after getting it sort of polished a little bit more, uh, uh, would probably be to send it and then spend a little bit of time figuring out if I can make it actually agnostic again. Or not again, make it agnostic so that it really does only depend on whether or not a architecture is using the generic entry code. Um, that might happen as a function of uh, dealing with ARM64 when they switch to the generic entry code. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what the state of that is. I know Mark Rutland was looking at that at least for a bit. I uh, but I. I'm, do not remember where what state it's in right now. Uh, so if they're not going to do it for the next release, for example, then I can probably just go ahead and send this as is with sort of the split between generic and the ARM64 piece. Then ARM64 goes to the generic entry code. That's probably a good time to spend a little bit more time thinking about what's needed because my understanding is that switching ARM64 to the generic entry code does involve some non-obvious manipulation of, of how the layout exists for, for the entry code for the stack the stack offset it's mostly just figuring out where the entry points are and plunking them there and making sure everything isn't broken um cool yeah so um with that thank you so much for going through thank you for your your comments and and uh, pillory review <laughs> um i got a i got a much improved git smash out of it um and i think i should uh, publish a little, little bit more into the my kernel tools tree um, just so people can laugh at the terrible scripts i have um but i think i'm gonna sign off thank you so much um have a good day or evening day morning Eat well, stay healthy, and uh, see everyone later. Bye-bye.